Alrighty, welcome to my channel, Steve with Window Cleaner. Today we are here with Jersey and we're gonna go over marketing tips to get more window cleaning customers. And we're just gonna go over three different categories. We're gonna go over residential, storefront, and then larger commercial. So Jersey, if you would like to tell us a little bit more about yourself in case somehow somebody doesn't know who you are, just tell us a little bit about you. Definitely. Yeah, I started a company, a uh, window cleaning business about 15 years ago. I ended up selling it uh, last September now. Uh, so I am officially out of the game. I've started two companies and sold two companies. Uh, the other one was real little, so I don't talk about that one. But um, so yeah, I've been in the game for quite a while. And uh, now I just have other interests uh, still in the industry. So nice. And with your businesses, were you only window cleaning or did you do other stuff as well? Uh, so we did window cleaning. I always joke that we were a window cleaning company that did pressure washing. And then when I moved to North Carolina, we were a pressure washing company that did window cleaning. So that tells you the focus, but yeah, window cleaning, pressure washing, roof cleaning, uh, and gutter cleaning. Awesome. Awesome. And as you know, when, when we receive questions, a lot of it's how do I get more business? So that's what we're going to be going over. So for residential, what did you find in your businesses that really helped uh, filter in more customers? Yeah, so that is the always be everywhere kind of concept with houses. So everything works in its own realm. So door hangers, uh, postcards, uh, all of that costs money, but it works really, really well. You either have time or you have money. So if you don't have money, but you have time, go hand out flyers, go hand out door hangers. I'm telling you, even buying professional versions of real nice paper versions are still ridiculously cheap. So Go spend the time to hang them out. If you got no time, but you got more money, meaning you're just busy in general, pay EDDM. That stuff all works really, really well with houses. Just get it in front of them. Let them kind of understand it. And when they have it in their heads, you'll be the first one they think of. Now, that's like one thing I've never dabbled in is EDDM. For EDDM, would you say that may be the most expensive route as far as like saturating an area overall? Yes. So EDDM is really cheap per piece, but it is really low ROI in the scheme of things, right? Your ROI on piece count, not dollar wise, you're talking about a half a percent as being awesome. So you hand out, you know, a hundred uh, EDDM pieces, you should get 5.5%. Uh, so half a percent, you should get half a job out of that. Uh, but our jobs range, you know, start at $249 or whatever. So that kind of tells you pricing wise, but you need to flood the market. You have to really deliver every door to make that work. And you have to send to the same people more than one time to actually make that ROI start climbing. So it's pretty expensive. It can get expensive. I think that's always the biggest topic that's hard to convey sometimes is that when you look at the actual cost of getting that customer for some of these things, it can be super low mm -hmm. in the long scheme of things, especially if you're working with that customer over years and years and years. Oh yeah. Well, here's the thing too. Like I always tell people if, if, if I somehow was some weird wizard and you could hand me a dollar and as soon as you handed me a dollar, I gave you $2 back. No one would care that they're spending $10,000 a month. No one would care. I mean, I would find a way to get you a million dollars because I'm guaranteed to get you 2 million back. If that's how you think of, and it's not guaranteed, but once you start building that kind of system, especially in EDDM and different things, you're building that ATM. You're building it so when you put a dollar in, you get $2 back. Then it doesn't matter. You're not focused on how much am I spending because you're focused on how much am I making. Right. Uh, great, great points. So if we move to storefront, you did build quite a bit of storefronts as well, right? Uh, we had, uh, so we had a route guy who uh, was one man crew who did route full time. So we did about, you know, 35 to 40 hours a week in route. Not a ton compared to some people, but it was definitely nice. But one guy doing route can really actually make oh, yeah. pretty good money, especially with good pricing, good systems in place overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're I mean, he was still averaging a good $70 an hour, which is pretty high for route, but our routes were so concentrated that you know, he got out of a truck. He was in one, one street for, you know, three hours in one of the days. So all you're doing is walking around and making money. I did a video recently on, on storefront pricing and someone said in there, I just don't understand driving 20 to 30 minutes for a $30 job. And I tried to emphasize, I said, that's, that is not what storefronts is about. It's not just like it's driving. Route. From, yeah. It's called a route for a reason. You concentrate it and you build it and it, it takes time to build routes. But when you put yeah. that time in and then you finally see it and how I think 
I think route work is the easiest work overall. I think yeah. it's just, you know, your customers every month, they know you, they know what to expect. You know, the jobs it's, it's not a home where you're going in and looking, Oh my gosh, there's this, this, and this, you know, but yeah. like, that's the thing I was trying to emphasize is when you do route work, it's really concentrated and it's all about working in one area if you can. And that's really how to make it efficient. Yeah. Route routes, the only type of cleaning that we do that we will lose money when we start doing that. Like everything else, you know, I mean, we're never really losing money, but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You will have your first job. Our minimum on a truck was 10 bucks. And I know everybody's up in arms, you know, oh, I won't do anything under a hundred. Well, you're not really in the route then. But uh, if you're into route and you have that, you know, a door and two windows, $10 is a great price. The downside is, like you said, I got to get in a truck, get my guys suited up to go drive to that particular job to make $10. It doesn't make sense. But once you get that job and you build that route all around, all of a sudden, like I said, you have a one mile stretch where you're on for three hours. All you're doing is just boom, 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 windows. And you have frequency, which we don't have with a lot of other stuff. So all of a sudden, if you can fill up a week's worth of work, that's weekly work, you have an entire year booked solid. Right. It's, uh, it's pretty dang good. Now, what was your main strategy in getting storefronts? Man, storefronts you cannot mail to. You can't send stuff to. They don't care. The gatekeepers are very, very good at what they do. So don't mail anything to route. Don't hand out anything just blindly. You have to go in and knock, say, hey, I'm Jersey with XYZ Window Cleaning Company. We're in the area. We do this job, this job, and this job. We'd love to give you a quote. Here it is. Uh, here's the products. You know, Just being as quick as possible, go, did you want to get that on uh, every week or every two weeks? taking out all those options for no's, it just gets people to the point. The downside with route and when you're selling route is that there's a lot of people that do it for beer money, right? The bucket bob. So you're competing against that. So most of our jobs, I mean, 87%, I think said no initially, or they say not right now, or they say whatever, or like, oh, we'll let you know. So it's all about follow-up, all about follow-up. So it's a little bit more of a multi-stage, but like you said, I've had route accounts for the entire time. I mean, I've had route. I started getting route accounts in my first year and we've had those same accounts. So think about 15 years of a route job where I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't have to move fancy furniture or walk on their white couch or step on their cat or any of that. I don't have to make small talk. I'm in and out. It's just a simple, simple, really good way to make frequency money. Yeah. And I would say too, it's like once that customer gets to know you real well, even if another business comes in with a lower bid or something extra that you don't have, a lot of them, um, the relationship is so good that they'll stay with mm -hmm. you and they're like, nope, we're happy about it. And they won't even look at another bid, yeah. you know? So well, surprisingly cover... loyal. Yeah, exactly. Now, one thing just to kind of a side point, would you say that with storefronts, what would you say is like a safe period? And we're talking about prices like to, to raise your prices over time as far as the storefronts. When I was working at Fish or with 2020, what we would do is at least every two years to three years, we'd raise them by 10% at least. Do you feel like that is a good business practice to be doing with storefronts? Yes. So every single year uh, you raise it. The, if you can do it every year, it could be smaller increments. Uh, so uh, what is it? 3% uh, uh, com combined per over two years equals like 8% raise, right? Yeah. You want to do that because the dollar is always going to inflate. There's always changes. If you don't change that, which a lot of people get stationary and they don't change those prices, they're actually making less every single year. So you have to raise those prices, but that's just like anything, all of your customers you should be doing, even if it's a 2% raise, you know, something that doesn't scare somebody off, stay relevant. Yeah, definitely. All right. So the next app we'll get into is like large commercial. So like business parks, uh, and we're not talking about high rise here, but we're just talking about, you know, maybe four story and down or, you know, car dealerships, these larger accounts. Um, what would you do as far as getting those accounts? Yeah. So mid rise is awesome. Also uh, mid rise is the type of thing that uh, you can do from the ground. Um, but it's a commercial property. So there isn't like an owner, there isn't like a store you walk in and they're not done route. Route would consider a weekly, bi-weekly or once a month. That still falls into building a route around. These are usually once a quarter, once every six months, once every year. Um, so there's a different way to kind of go about it, but it is usually um, governed by a property manager and you have to find that property manager. 
The nice thing about it is these are going to be the most work out of all of them because you have to kind of find the right person and get the paper into there, you know, and then all of a sudden they, oh, we're not coming up for bid for, you know, three months and you're going to be continuing to follow up with them. But when you get a property manager on your team, all of a sudden you get all their properties. I got people who, you know, they'll, I'll be bidding jobs for them because they're property, you know, managers for 12 different buildings. I'll have every building they ever do. So it's really, really nice to get that for multi locations. The other nice, really, really nice thing about uh, that type of work is that you could fill dead space. So pre spring, right before everything cracks off, I put a, my every six month job in middle of summer when nothing's going on, I put my every six month job in. So you're filling those dead spaces with this big chunk. You may not get that check right away. Usually they're pretty good. They pay about 30, not 30, something like that. But uh, that big chunk is when you could fill them any time in the year. So you're building your year. You're making it a lot more uh, stronger, if you will. Right. Yeah. And something I found with larger commercial too that we've done is uh, we got in with some of the larger janitorial companies and they, and we were subcontracted, but it worked out very nice. They would put their own, you know, amount on the, the bill as well. But I mean, what we were doing a lot of was just inside of commercial buildings and usually, you know, the, the, the people renting the inside, they have to take care of the inside and then the owners take care of the outside. So sometimes you may see on a building where one company does the outside, one company does the inside. You never see each other, but you guys do it on a, on a schedule. And that's the way a lot of these go. So you might not always get in and out, but that's just due to, you know, who's owning and who's renting the building. Yeah. And I could tell you that out of all of my commercial buildings, every single one of them, I don't do the inside of any of them. I do do the inside of a few of them, but not like you, like you said, I don't do that in the package because the property managing company deals with the outside. There's other companies that do the inside. So if you're doing janitorial or even better, like you said, if you're uh, subbing to janitors, you'll still do that inside work and then leave a little bit of cushion, you know, that 10, 15% on there, let them make some money too. Because if I said, Hey, I got this $500 job. I want to give it to you. Uh, would you give me, you know, 20, 50 bucks? You'd say, well, heck yeah right? It's the same concept. Make them happy and they'll continue to send you work. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that pretty much covers it for today as far as covering residential, storefront, large commercial. So I want to thank you, Jersey, for coming on here and sharing your experience. Uh, You have a lot of experience in this trade uh, in the window cleaning industry. So thank you for that. Anything you would like to plug before we get off here? Well, I do. Uh, yes. American Window Cleaner Magazine is up. You're famous. That's me. More famous than you already were. <laughs> uh, January's issue uh, is finally hitting uh, mailboxes. If you were ever interested in getting a uh, industry magazine, this is the best one in the world, according to my mom. So definitely uh, get that. <laughs> Go to awcmag.com. You can get a subscription to that. And then uh, January has awesome steve and there's a sticker sheet in every single issue so every window loves stickers i will put a link to be able to uh, get the magazine in the description of this video so check that out and uh, once again thank you jersey definitely man thanks for having me all righty man peace yep